Nick, it's Friday night. It's almost go home time for me. I've been slaving away all week. You've been lounging around on holidays. Can you please get me out of here? Yes, welcome to the show. Hook, line and sinker. Tasmania's own fishing show is back on the road. And there is a lovely little bit of warm water just drifting down the east coast. It is the eve of the St Helens Game Fishing Classic. We're going. Hardy, let's go. Nick, there are some tuna in there. I can see them. Let's go load up the Pajero and get out of here. Nick, it's Friday night, it's Game Fish Classic Eve. Atmosphere, it's electric, and it seems we're not the only ones excited. No, Andrew, over there, there are about 40,000 of Tasmania's great unwashed fishing masses, and they're all preparing for tomorrow, the start of the St. Helens Game Fish Classic. We're pretty excited, I think they're pretty excited by the sounds of them. Let's go and see what they've got to say on the eve of Tasmania's biggest fishing competition. It's very exciting. Should be interesting. What, just after a few flathead tomorrow, a mullet? <laughs> uh, a few tuna would be nice. A few fish about? It's been up and down. Yeah, the last few days there's been a few caught, nothing major, but uh, in numbers there's been a few. Personally, what would be a milestone catch for you? Marlin, first marlin. Never yeah. caught a marlin? No, I caught yellowfin last year that won me the competition and won me a lot of prizes. Well, it's almost bedtime here on Game Fish Classic Eve. But first, the traditional the boat cover. cow cutter. Every vessel is auctioned. The winning one, well, it's worth quite a bit of money. Some clown bought our boat for 60 bucks, so now the pressure's really on. Nick, day one and devastation. Very disappointing, I've got to say, Andrew. Uh, the day has dawned and the Weather Bureau have got it absolutely right, unfortunately. Well done, Peter Murphy. It is blowing. It is 20 to 30 knots of nor'easterly, and that is, uh, for a lot of the boats in the fleet, uh, that's too rough. Oh, it's been called off till 12, and uh, I guess that's a smart move, given the fact that there's so many small boats in the fleet, you know, things under 18 foot, you don't really want them bobbing around out there, do you? Well, that's the thing. I guess the organisers are trying to keep it so there's no pressure on the skippers to go out. I mean, obviously, some of the bigger boats can go out there, no problem at all, but it's the smaller boats. The organisers are trying to keep the pressure off them. I think it's a pretty good move. We might go and put the boat in the bay, maybe catch a mullet instead of a marlin today. Sounds good. <laughs> Andrew, somehow I don't think we're going to be needing this today. Well, Nick, not unless there's a couple of big flathead around, <laughs> because we've changed our tactics from the continental shelf to the oyster racks at George's Bay. Yes, it's a little bit rough offshore, but in the bay it's beautiful, mirror calm, and so we'll go out there and see if we can put a fish in the boat and keep our St Helens adventure alive and well. We are out in George's Bay at St Helens. It's uh, freshened up to a lazy 58 knots at the minute, so there's no chance of us going out to sea. But we're in the bay here, and I've just caught a couple of lovely little fish here. These are little silver trevally, and they are on what we call, I think it's a Japanese kind of bait riggy kind of thing. No, uh, no bait on these things, just a couple of little feathers on the hook and a double header of little trevs, very nice. Pop them back in, they might have some big brothers down there. And it's I got not... one too. Look at that, it's all happening out here in George's Bay. It's not really a uh, tuna, but I mean, you know, a lot of people today might have just given up when the competition was cancelled, but no, not us, Nick. Not us, Andrew. We're we probably out here should have given up, but catching not us. tiddlers, but hey, it brings a smile to our face, so, you know. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. oh boy. At this stage of the show, I was hoping to explain to you how to set up a rig of tuna and marlin lures. Instead, we're still inside George's Bay as the wind blows, and this is how to catch a tiny little trevally. Small sinker, small hook, everyday paternoster rig, 
a little bit of pilchard bait, tiny hook because they've only got tiny mouths. You increase your chances with burley, and more importantly, being on the water at the right time. Although it doesn't look real flash at the moment, we've got the turn of the tide, the slack water, and uh, there's a few fish about, so it's a bit of fun. Well, the big fish continue to come on board here and hook, line, and sinkers game fishing extravaganza. The last one was all of 30 grams. This one might be 35. But stay with us after the break, you never know. We may even get out there into the big blue and find a tuna, but I'm not making any promises the way this weather's looking. Stick with us. Oh, you are a big, big, powerful fish. Well, welcome back to the show. As you can see, this is not George's Bay. This is the big blue. Out five miles southeast of St Helens. Game rod in hand, pen reel, beautiful pen rod, thanks to our friends at Jarvis Walker. And we are, would you believe, into a fish. It's quite good. We've been trolling out here. Not a lot of life, really, not a lot of bird action or anything to suggest that the fish are all around. Water temperature's about 20 degrees. It looks pretty good. And uh, sure enough, not much of a fish. He's not playing up like a second-hand lawnmower. So I would call this fish for a pretty small albacore in the probably two to three kilo range. As you can probably also see, there's a little bit of slop out here today, which is making it quite tough for me and the crew. But game fishing we promised, game fishing you've got, and it's not too bad. It's only quite a small fish. I have to do this all on my own. We're a bit light-handed today, but there he is. Little albacore. Uh, this is not recommended. This is not how you do it, really. But uh, necessity dictates. Oh, you are a big, big, powerful fish. But that is a little albacore tuna. And that's probably one of the most common tuna species that we catch in Tasmania. The other one is uh, striped tuna and the odd yellow. Uh, yellow fin, and where there's one, there's generally a few more. We'll go and catch another one, I reckon. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Right. Two on. You want me to get that other line in? Uh, alright. They're only small fish. Well, double hook up. Here on the Mighty Bandit. Out in the uh, Tasman Sea. Just trolling through. And uh, these are only small fish. Only small fish, so it's not too much of a challenge. We might have to do the we might have to do the dance here, Hardy, do we? Yeah mate. Do the dance there, Mike. Sorry about that. There he is, another fairly small albacore tuna. Well, very small, but uh, double hook up. Andrew sounds like it's going a bit better, but we'll swing him aboard. Are you striving? Ah, uh, help. Yeah. No. Have a little Albies. What does that one weigh, Hardy? Mate, he's about two and a half kilo. He's not real big for an Albacore, but uh, well, that's but, all right. Uh, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere, and it's only early in the day. What have we got? It's uh, yeah, it's only quarter to nine. We've gone been on the water uh, for an hour, hour or so. A few fish in the boat. It's not too bad. Weather's a bit ordinary. You get that out here, I suppose. Well, we've 
we've just gone through a patch of fish where we hooked up three in, you know, three minutes. And what I've done here is, is put quite a heavy jig on the end of this thread line outfit. Jarvis Walker, Gen X, beautiful thing. Quite a heavy jig, just letting it sink down. Just wind it quite out. And because we know there are fish in the water, we are on. Look at that. Albacore on the thread line. That's how easy it is out here fishing. It's a good one to try if you're out game fishing and you go through a, a patch of these smaller fish, which on the big rods aren't going to test you out too much. This is a uh, pen rod, as I said, a Jarvis Walker Gen X thread line, quite a big thread line, 10, pa uh, 10 kilo line, and uh, drop the jig on, let it sink down, then whine. And there he goes. Pretty good fun, this. Just give him a little bit more drag. And these fish are uh, as a sporting proposition, as you can see. Not bad. Oh! I've Close. dropped him. I've dropped him. How about that? What a fisherman. Although this is a lot of fun uh, catching you know, little fish on this little thread line gear. It's a little bit dangerous as well, hanging such a small rod out the back. I mean, there are big fish here, big yellowfin male, and, and chances are, even though we've got the big 50-pound rods out, if a male one comes up, it'll probably grab this rod here. And that, uh, well, it'll be fun while it lasted for about one second. But no, when you hook little sort of albacore and stripies on this gear, it's, it's, it just makes it much more enjoyable. Another small albacore. In fact, I'm wrong, it's a stripey. <laughs> well, this little stripey is uh, one of the other common catches in Tasmania. They're, uh, they're fantastic bait. They're not great to eat, very oily uh, and bloody, but uh, they make fantastic bait. And where there's stripies, there's marlin and yellowfin and mako sharks. They're, uh, they're pretty easy to catch. Small lures in the wash, just throw them off, and they fight too. If, if these things grew to 100 pounds, they'd be a pretty fair sport fish. In fact, they'd be unstoppable. One of the great things about fishing a competition as opposed to just being out here on the water is that you get coverage. There's a lot of boats out. They're looking for safety. You get coverage every two hours. A radio sked, they call a radio sked, where you give your position on the map how many on board, how many fish you've got. Back at race control, if you like, they know exactly where each of the 100 boats are at any given time. And so you feel pretty secure out on the water, even though things are a bit tough. Our skipper and sound engineer for the day, John King, one of Tasmania's finest. We're just about to do the skate Kingy. Can you put us on a position? Where do you think we are? Yes, we're on a position which is on the map as Foxtrot 12. Foxtrot 12 sounds good. Plenty of fish at Foxtrot 12. We'll get a look at you. We're just about to do the 940 sked, so we'll have a bit of a look at that. Bandit, Bandit, you copy over. So now on this is Bandit. We're at Foxtrot 12 with 12 albacore on board. 12 with 12 albacore. Thanks, Bandit. Well, another fish on, and again, a small albacore by the feel of it, not putting out much of a fight, but it is probably the most important thing about tuna fishing or one of the most important things about tuna fishing where there's one fish it seems to follow that there are more so if you find them it's not a bad idea to hang around and work that area we've uh, we've just been trolling around since we picked up a bit of a stall and uh, at the minute it's sort of oh look at that He's working the big Albie. But uh, every five minutes or so now there's a fish on. There's obviously plenty of fish here. And uh, it's just a matter of being where the fish are, I guess. And it looks today, and by the sound of what's going on on the radio, it looks like everyone's pretty much found the fish today. I'll get uh, the great man, Andrew Hart, who's been spending the day 
calling for Herb over the side. Herb! <laughs> Beautiful little fish they are, these. They get up to 10 kilos, I guess, is a pretty good albacore. This is, you know, two, perhaps a little bit better than that. But uh, they do get up to 10 kilos. Uh, this is not too bad, Hardy. We're going all right. It's been a bit of fun, a lot of fish about. There are a lot of fish about out here. For the islands, it's a pretty good place to come. We've let the skipper off the hook and you've caught a striped tuna. Beautiful, beautiful. Although it didn't look that scientific what they were doing out there today, there are a few little things that you can do to improve your chances of catching a tuna. First of all, your boat. It needs to be well set up, good sturdy rod holders are the key. That way you can run four or five or even six rods. The more rods you've got, the more lures out there. Then you go to your lures, you want a spread of lures. The reason being, that, that looks like a school of fish that, that attracts the tuna up from the bottom. What sort of lures to run? Little things like this, that's probably the best, best bet of catching a fish. It's probably not gonna be a very big fish, but uh, that's what we caught the majority of our albacore and striped tuna on today. If you run four or five of them, you'll catch fish and lots of them. Uh, you may have noticed we also had a deep, deeper diving lure on. It's a, not a bad idea to keep this on. Uh, it just gets down below the, below the bubbles and uh, quite often catches some decent fish, including yellowfin. Yellowfin love them. And then if you've got a big rod, put a big lure on because there are big fish out there, although we didn't show you one. Hopefully maybe someone will at the weigh-in. But a big lure like this Pakula here, beautiful. Marlin will come up and nab that every time. Game fishing in Tasmanian waters can be absolutely awesome one day, but a long wait between bites the next. St Helens is recognised as Tassie's number one game fishing spot. The tuna usually move in early each year, although some years, depending on water temperature, albacore can be caught from November through to May. Species on offer include the ever-present albacore, there's also striped tuna, yellowfin and bluefin tuna, as well as mako sharks and the most sought after of them all, the striped marlin. And although we didn't get a marlin, the boys on replay had a little more luck. Yo, typhoon! This is Sunday afternoon when I think we were already back on shore. Maybe we missed out, but these boys certainly didn't. This is Big Jim with a lollipop in his mouth, hooked up to a marlin, which could have won the tournament for the boys. And after a mammoth two and a half hour fight on older style game gear, the fish was so close. But then the unthinkable, the magnificent fish, finally winning its freedom. It was a great fish, but not the only one for the competition. As conditions calmed off Sunday afternoon, other boats began to hook up. The eventual winner, American angler Gary Murphy, who caught this 75 kilo beauty. The gracious winner giving his brand new Yamaha to the skipper who put him onto the fish. Well, you've seen a few big fish up on the way bridge. Unfortunately, the crew on Bandit and Hook, Line and Sinker didn't get any of those big fish. But we have got Australian angling's biggest fish, possibly. That is the man they call Kay Bush. Kay, welcome to the show, mate. Lovely Thanks. to have you along. Thanks a lot. What are your impressions on St Helens and the Game Fish Classic? Well, it's been a great tournament. St Helens is a great place. And uh, today I was on the winning boat, Salt Shaker, skippered by Rocky Karossi. So I think it was a very, very good tournament. But uh, look, there's great lots of bait out there. There's plenty of marlin. I think as people really work this hard, there's going to be a lot of fish caught out of St Helens. It's a great place. Beautiful. Lovely to have you along. Well, let's hope that happens, Bushy. It is great to have you on the show. And uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time this week. But next week, oh, we're into the fish. We're into kingfish. We're into snapper. We're into big salmon, all on Flinders Island. It'll be one of the best hook, line and sinkers ever as Flinders Island fires for the camera and we catch some fish of a lifetime. Where we're uh, out on the high seas. 
about five miles. Hardy's feeling a little bit green. You probably can see that there's a little bit. Oh, keep fighting, mate. Keep fighting.